Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're jumping back into DaVinci Resolve to do a highly requested video on how to make modern titles, kinda like this one. So building title effects, it's, it's not really a complicated task, but I feel that the things that you learn when building them can be really valuable if you learn to implement them in other ways. So that's why we're gonna delve in and create that title effect in today's video. And hopefully you learn a couple extra tips on um, animating infusion inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's just jump in, get it out of the way because it ain't gonna take long and you're gonna learn a few things today. So we're going to drag a fusion composition. So generate uh, effects, fusion composition. We just drag that down onto the timeline and you know, I think the default length should be good enough. So with that selected, we're gonna jump over to the Fusion tab and we're gonna have everything set up ready to go. So obviously the first thing we need to do is create our title. So we're just gonna go shift space, type in text and we're just gonna add a standard text plus, pump that into our media out and we're going to just, let's say Misty Mountains, why not? Because it's kind of, let's go full capitals as well. Misty Mountains. And you know, we can change the font and all that sort of stuff here. Cool. All right, so now we've got our font and what we're gonna do is just gonna move it up a little bit so it's not perfectly center. And we're going to create a another text just so we can you know have something interesting. So we're gonna go and just type another text one, Ooh, not text 3D, text plus, hit enter. And again, we're just going to drag that and create a merge node there. And with the text two selected, we could just type in, let's say the journey, not important. And we're gonna keep this one in open sans just for now. We're gonna increase the size just a little bit, maybe adjust the tracking a little bit. Up to you how you want this one to look. We're just obviously, you know, we're just changing the way it looks. And now we have, you know, an interesting sort of title. Now we can rename these. So what we can do is rename this one and we're just gonna go the journey and rename this one Misty Mountains. And it's a good habit to get into renaming nodes when you're using text or media, just so you know exactly, you know, what ones you're looking at. And we're also gonna create just a little line in the middle. So we're gonna create a background. We're gonna make it white. Again, we're gonna plug it into the merge, so it's merged in, and we're just with the background selected, shift space, we're gonna add a rectangle mask, and that's gonna change the size of everything, and we're just with the rectangle selected, gonna play around with the width of everything. So we're gonna make it almost as wide as the title itself, and then we're gonna bring it right down, just a nice little line like so, and reposition it down there, maybe make it just a little thinner. There we go. So now we have our title, and if we go back to our edit page, you can see we've got the title there. Nice and, you know, it's nice. So let's start animating. So the first thing I wanna animate is this line. We're gonna make it sort of appear from the center out, and then we're going to have the Misty Mountains rise from the top, and then the journey appear from the bottom. So pretty simple stuff. So to control the animation of the rectangle, we're gonna plug a rectangle mask into the merge two. So with the merge two selected, we're gonna sh shift space, type in rectangle, and that's going to add this mask down the bottom here. Let's just rearrange things so that it stays nice and, you know, neat. And as you can see here, we've got this rectangle mask and it's cutting off the line. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to change the width we're gonna go right down to zero. Now you can't see anything. Fantastic, that's what we want. So at frame zero, we're gonna set a keyframe and we're going to go forward a little bit, maybe 10 frames, half a second-ish, and we're going to reset that. Actually, we're gonna bring it right up to the length that we want it. So now if we play that through, we've got a line that comes out like so. Nice and easy. So now we need to create some rectangle masks for the other text. So let's start with the Misty Mountains one. So we're gonna go shift space, type in rectangle, and this is going to control the sort of where this comes from. So we're gonna resize it. So we're gonna increase the width and we're just going to drop the position of it down so that it covers the text like so. And we're going to set a keyframe at frame 15 of the position 
So the center, X and Y, of that rectangle mask there. The reason we're setting it at 15 is so that we have a little bit of delay after the line is formed, and then the text can jump up. So we're gonna then move this up like so. And now if we play this back, now we have our line appear and then the text appear like so. And in fact, what we could do is make that text appear just a little bit faster. So we might drop that down to five frames and just move the height up like so. So now we have our animation and we'll fix the stiffness of it a bit later. So now we just need to do the journey part down the bottom. So with the journey text node selected again, shift space, rectangle, pretty much rectangle masks or you know ellipse masks or polygons, that's how we're gonna control the animation of the majority of everything because that's gonna hide the text, make it look like it's moving. So again, what we can do with this because it already covers it is we can actually invert this mask. So we're gonna invert it. So now that, that, so now that text is hidden, I'm going to increase the width a bit and the height, just maybe make the width a bit more. And so basically, we're going to animate it down like so. So we're going to have it positioned there. And at frame 25, again, a bit more of a delay, going to set a position on the center, go forward a little bit. This one can be a bit slower. And we're just going to drop that down like so. So now if we play this through, line appears, Misty Mountains, the journey, and then we can let everything settle for a little bit and then at the end say at frame 85 what we'll do is we're going to set a keyframe for rectangle 4 and go forward five frames we're going to hide it and then at that frame we're going to set a keyframe for the misty mountains one go forward five frames we're going to hide that and then we're going to set a keyframe for the mask down here so keyframe for the width on this one, because that's how we control this one. Go forward 10 frames, and we're just going to bring that right back down to zero. So now if we were to play this animation in its entirety, and then it settles for a little bit, and then journey, Missy Mountains, and then the line disappears. So now what we need to do is sort of smooth everything out. So we're gonna hide the nodes and bring in our spline editor, because we're gonna need it. And we're going to turn on rectangle one for now. We're gonna work on each one individually. So hit this button here, that's gonna fit everything to scale. That's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is grab this top one here and hit shift S. That's gonna smooth that out and we can control how smooth you want it to be. Gonna do the same thing down here, shift S. And again, control that. And we're gonna leave it like so. So that's gonna make it ease in a little bit and it will ease out. So now we're gonna go down to the next rectangle. Same thing, fit to frame, and we're going to shift S on that, shift S on that. And the reason why we don't do them all is if we hit shift S here, you can see it creates this loopy thing. So we're just gonna leave it like that. So it eases into the animation and eases out. It's perfectly fine. I'm gonna do the same on the last one. Fit to frame, same thing here, Shift S, Shift S. I'm gonna bring that down, stretch it out so that, cool, very good. So now if we look at everything, it'll look a little bit smoother. So it's not as stiff anymore, there's a little bit more smoothness. One last thing we can do is with the rectangle tool selected, we can go to this gear icon here, so the settings, we can turn on motion blur. I'm gonna do that for every single one. We can just leave the default settings, should be fine. And by doing that, it's gonna make it look just a little bit more realistic by adding a little bit of blur, and obviously you can control how much you want, and then, very good. And we can obviously go through here and control some of the fonts. So maybe we wanna change this to be a little bit more orange because you know that's technically how that text looks in Jurassic Park. So we can make it look nice deep orange, leave it like that. Maybe we wanna change the color of the line in the middle, make it red. No, red looks terrible. Let's just go with that. I don't know, looks a bit fun. Go back to our edit page. Now we have our text, we render it out. Very good.
Really, really simple animation. What I'm gonna show you now is another way that we could do this. So that is controlling just the masks and you can see it creates a really nice effect here. What we're going to do now is show another way to do it. So, by jumping back into the Fusion tab, what we're gonna do is going to delete all the masks that we have made. Why we're doing that? We're doing that because what we're gonna do now is instead of animating the masks, we're going to animate the text. Well, actually what we'll do is we're going to leave the we're gonna leave this one down because that one still makes sense. So we're gonna have that come out like that. But what we're gonna do now is with the journey, so we're gonna shift space, create another rectangle. And what we're gonna do is increase the width so that it covers the whole thing. And we're gonna drop it down right to the point where it covers. So if we zoom in here, we want that line to just on the bottom of the line. So we're gonna move that down, perfect. All right, and now what we're going to do is animate the uh, position of journey. We're gonna animate this by going to the second tab, so the layout tab, and here you can control your position of the text. And again, we're gonna start from frame 15. We're gonna move it up, and you can see it disappears now because obviously that mask is obscuring this area as the viewable area. Gonna set a keyframe on the center, X and Y, move forward five frames, and drop it down. And what we can do here is we can actually now that that's automatically set a keyframe. We can go forward one, two frames, set another keyframe. So it's gonna bounce down a little bit. We can go one, two, and we're just going to put it back here. So we're just gonna copy that value and just paste it in here. So now we have like a little bounce. So that's gonna animate really nicely just to give it a little bit more life. And again, we can do that with everything. So we're gonna quickly do the same thing with the Misty Mountains here. So we're gonna go rectangle and same thing, increase the width, move the position of it down to obscure it or up. Depends on how you wanna do it. We can move it down and then invert the mask or we can move it up and use it as a window. So we'll use it as a window. And then with the Misty Mountains text selected, go out to the layout. We're gonna move it down. And at frame 25, we'll set a keyframe. I just realized we've done this back to front, but whatever. Move forward five frames, move it up. Very good. Then we're gonna move it, then we're gonna go forward one, two frames, move it slightly up again, and then copy that, go over here, paste that in. And so now we have our little, if we play this back, a little bit of a bounce. So if we play this animation back now, line appears, journey bounce, bounce. And to fix that bounce, to make it look a little bit more natural, again, we go to our spline editor and we're just going to open up the animations here. So if we fit this to frame, this is our sort of our animation and we just shift S that, smooth it out a little bit and that'll make it look a little bit less static. I'm gonna do that same thing with the Misty Mountain one here, fit to frame, and we're just gonna go Shift S. Same thing, so now if we play this back, and we can obviously, if we wanna add a bit more, you know, motion blur, we can by just having the text selected this time. Again, settings, motion blur, text selected, settings, motion blur, and then if we go back over here, let this render out, and now we have our text with the background, bounce, bounce, in like so. Well, there you have it guys, a really easy tutorial on how to build a modern title effect. Obviously you can use those masks to animate that text whichever way you like. And what's great is that using masks like this is the best way to create your own motion graphics in Fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve or in the standalone Fusion software. So hopefully you learned a little bit about animating them and how to use them in different ways today. So you can go off and um, make your own title effects and I'd love to see them. So drop a link in the comments section below to your own video or your channel. Let me know if you've created your own effect in Fusion. I'd love to jump through and have a look, you know, check out your channels. As always, if you found this video helpful guys, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe because it definitely supports the channel. Nearly at 7,000 now, which is just 
insane. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed already. And until the next video, guys, see ya.